In this video, I'm gonna show you how to download and install Grammarly for free on your computer today. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to want to go onto the Grammarly landing page to download Grammarly. So I'd encourage you to use the link in the doobly-doo below. It is an affiliate link, so that'll give me about 20 cents for everyone who downloads and installs Grammarly, but it's completely free to use, so I would appreciate if you do use that link. And you'll get to a page like this one. Now you'll see that my one says add to Chrome, it's free. If you're on a different browser, you might be on Firefox or you might be on Safari. It'll probably say add to Firefox or add to Safari because it knows which browser you're on. But no matter what, just click that green link and it'll take you to the download page. So here it's gonna take you to the download page on Chrome or Firefox or wherever you are and you can just click add to Chrome. And then it'll ask you to add the extension. Just click add the extension. Give it a little bit of a minute to install and then here you'll see Grammarly for Chrome has been added to Chrome. Okay, and now once you've added it to Chrome or whatever your Google browser is, it's gonna take you to this page that says Grammarly is installed. This page should automatically load, so you just have to wait one or two seconds and it'll pop up once you've installed it as an extension. Now once you're there, you're gonna to wanna to add an email address. So I've added the email address I use for my website, a password, and of course your name. And there we go, so I'm gonna save my password for next time I need to come in. And then it's gonna ask me a series of questions to sort of personalize uh, my experience. So most of my writing is for school. I'm a university teacher, so I'm gonna use it uh, for writing essays and things like that. I want help with plagiarism, spelling and grammar, sounding more fluent, synonyms, all of these things, clear communication, tone and delivery, conciseness. I want it to help me with all of those things. So I'm gonna click all of them and continue. I want help identifying when I sound. Well, I'm gonna click all of these as well because I want Grammarly to give me as much help as possible. And then my primary language is English. And then I'm gonna continue. And then there's this button here, continue to Grammarly, it's free. So there's all these things that you can buy if you wanna buy the premium version. You can deal with that later. For now, let's just install the free version. Okay, and then it's gonna bring us to a landing page for Grammarly. I'm gonna skip the tour and it's gonna bring me to this demonstration page. Now, chances are you're gonna to wanna to know how you can put Grammarly onto Microsoft Word because it's probably the most common thing that most people use uh, Grammarly for. So once you've signed up for Grammarly and you've got that Grammarly on your Chrome browser or your Firefox browser, the next step is to download the plugin for Grammarly for Microsoft Word. So we're gonna to go to grammarly.com forward slash office dash admin. Again, I've provided a link to this in the doobly doop underneath. Once you're onto the, this link, you can click get it for Windows, it's free. And then a file is going to download. Once the file has been downloaded, you just click on that file at the bottom and it's gonna ask us to get started. So select the Grammarly product you'd like to install, Grammarly for Word and Grammarly for Outlook. And then we're gonna click finish. Now, if you already had Microsoft Office open, you'll need to reset Microsoft Office in order for it to actively work properly on your Microsoft Word or uh, wherever you're using it in Microsoft Office. So you should be able to use it in Office and Outlook as well. So I'm just gonna close all of my Microsoft Office documents, all of my Microsoft Word files, and then I'll reopen them and we'll start looking at how it works. Okay, so here we are, I've just reopened Word to see whether or not Grammarly installed properly. And you can see right at the top there, there's a Grammarly link now. So now we're at the Grammarly link, we can open Grammarly. And then it's gonna ask us to sign in. Remember, I signed in with my email, so I'm just gonna add my email address here and we can sign in. You're obviously gonna to wanna to use that password that you just used to create your Grammarly account, so hopefully you have remembered it. And now I'm gonna type. Now, one of my students has kindly given me a couple of paragraphs of his work, so I'm gonna paste it in here and we're gonna see how we can improve his work using Grammarly on Microsoft Word. So we're using Kieran's work here and I've just pasted in two paragraphs of Kieran's assignment that he's about to submit for one of my classes. And here you can see on the right hand side, because we've opened up Grammarly, that it's giving us a whole lot of bits of advice on how to improve our writing. So let's go to the first one. It's asking interpretivist, should I turn it into interpretive? Now I need to use my head here because Grammarly is not always correct. Actually, no, interpretivist is the right thing I wanna say there. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. 
the individual's opinions. Yes, there should be an apostrophe for the individual's opinions because the individual owns the opinions. So I'm going to stick an apostrophe there. Now we've already seen that interpretivist is correct. So let, I'm actually going to add that to my dictionary because obviously Grammarly is not sure that, that I'm using it correctly, but I know that I am. So I'm clicking add to the dictionary. Now, therefore, needs a comma before and after it. It usually does. I'm going to accept. In relation to, maybe we can change it to something like about. Yep, I'm going to change it to about the topic. Observation, comma. Also through the use of observation, comma, the aspect of research. Yes, I agree with that. So I'm going to accept. Own is redundant because we've got there before it. Good job, Grammarly. I'm going to fix that as well. And then again, individuals, we need that apostrophe. Apostrophes is one of those really common things that students get wrong in their assignments. And it's really great that Grammarly goes through and fixes them all up really easily. All right, and we're done with all of our basic issues. If you want to check out the premium issues, you'll have to click on premium issues. It'll go to the website and it's going to tell us um, a couple of premium issues that it'll fix. Things like fluency, conciseness, those sorts of things. I do find that the most value that you can get out of Grammarly is through the premium version. So if you have the money, um, I would encourage you to at least spend maybe one month worth of payment into the premium version. And after that month, if you don't think it's worth your while, it's only spin a couple of dollars and then you can cancel your subscription. But have a go at the premium version because it is actually really good. So I'd encourage you to use Grammarly uh, just before you submit your assignments to pick up a lot of those errors that you would usually make. One of the really nice things about Grammarly is it's a lot more easy to use than Microsoft Word Spell Checker and it picks up a lot more things. So I personally do prefer Grammarly over Microsoft Word. And if you get to the, the premium version of Grammarly, it picks up a whole bunch more things. Things that really bug teachers like uh, paragraphs that are too long or sentences that are too long. It really picks up on those little things and works a treat.